Hey, what's the difference between COVID-19 and Southwest Airlines? At least COVID is airborne. So over the Christmas holiday, obvious we had a couple things that we were dealing with. There was this incredible weather pattern which created absolutely outrageous and horrific weather conditions for certain parts of the country that were not only dealing with extreme cold, but extreme snow and ice. That obviously disrupted travel. But on top of that, we have this reoccurring problem with Southwest Airlines. They overbook way overbook. In fact, they intentionally overbook. They book for flights that they know absolutely do not exist. And apparently, tens of thousands of people on Christmas Eve Eve and Christmas Eve and Christmas Day found themselves not spending Christmas with family and loved ones, but in airports. And at certain places and at certain times, Southwest got so chippy with their customers who had paid for a seat that didn't exist that they even brought in the police to have them removed from complaining at the gate. So Mayor Pete, the guy who's the transportation secretary for one Obama Biden, sprang into action by doing absolutely nothing. Are you really surprised by this? I mean, this is a guy who was running for the presidency because he had all of this incredible experience as the mayor of South Bend, Indiana. I've been to South Bend, Indiana. So he was supposed to be this new rock star in the Democratic Party. He was articulate. He was sharp. He was young. He's focused. He's gay. And this is all the Democrats and the party bosses needed. This was going to be the guy. And somewhere along the line, they began to figure out he's really inept. And I'm sure some of that came into play when during the primaries, he went back to South Bend to deal with an issue there, and he was literally seen almost begging his black constituents, please don't be mad, please tell me how I can do better, please, please, but he showed no leadership ability whatsoever. And I think at that point, the party boss were like, okay, we got to reel this guy back. And they had made their selection that it was going to be Obama Biden, but nonetheless, he was gaining ground in the polls. He Young people seemed to like him, were voting for him, but they had to get him off the campaign trail. They needed him to bow out. Why, he even got a celebrity endorsement from John Dutton, I mean Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner was out there saying, Pete Booty a gig, that's the guy. Yeah, apparently not, because he bowed out and he cut his sweetheart deal with the new Biden administration. You will make me a secretary of something, and you will make sure that it is minimal work, but high profile. Well, he got his wish. And right in the very beginning of his job, he had to go on maternity leave, because he and his husband gave birth. No, they adopted some kids. And he's on maternity leave while we were having a supply chain crisis. And then we had problems with air travel that he assured us it's going to be taken care of. And by the holidays, there'll be no problems. And look what happened over Christmas. Of course, this got the political pundits asking the question, is the future of Mayor Pete in jeopardy? I'm going to answer that. We're not even going to build this out. No, it's not in jeopardy. He's a Democrat. He's going to be just fine. You can lie repeatedly. You can be completely incompetent. You can even think really stupid things like, you know, roads are racist. You know, I, I'm still surprised that some people were surprised when I pointed to the fact that uh, if a highway was built for the purpose of di dividing a white and a black neighborhood, 
or if an underpass was constructed such that a bus carrying mostly black and Puerto Rican kids uh, to a beach, or it would have been, uh, in New York was, was designed uh, too low for it to pass by, that that obviously reflects racism that went into those design choices. Um, I don't think we have anything to lose by confronting that simple reality. <laughs> okay. Um, apparently through the years, vehicles didn't get taller and underpasses weren't substandard because they had built been built at a time when vehicles were lower that that didn't play into it it was they were designed to keep puerto ricans and black people from going to the beach will you give me a break that doesn't even pass the laugh test that's just more pandering and when you look at the designs of the the highway system in particular through new york it was designed to build up Queens because that's where the World's Fair was going to be and then eventually Shea Stadium would be built there for the expansion of Major League Baseball. I promise you there was no thought in how do we keep minorities away from here? No, no, nay, nay. They wanted them there. So this is just, just more fantasy from Mayor Pete who's in over his head. His only qualification to be transportation secretary is he's ridden in a car and occasionally on a train. Wow. So he he was he's over his head, he doesn't know what to do, and he's not going to do anything to penalize Southwest Airlines, which was given billions in bailout money during COVID lockdowns when people couldn't fly. And did they take that money and invest? in their computer system because some of what we're hearing from some pilots is not only is Southwest completely booking flights that don't exist, but you compile it with the problems we had over the Christmas holiday with the weather and flights had to be canceled anyway. They have such an antiquated system. Things were having to be done by hand because they don't have the computers or the computer software to do what all the other airlines are doing. You understand that means Allegiant and Spirit Air have better uh, computerized uh, customer service and ticketing than Southwest Airlines? So did Southwest take that bailout money that they got from the government and use it to upgrade their systems? No! <laughs> they cut checks for the CEO and all the shareholders. And is Mayor Pete going to do anything? Is he going to slap sanctions on them and force them to pay back their bailout money? Of course not. It's just going to magically get better. And now there are Democrats saying, we, we, we can't have this guy around. It's okay. Relax. Mayor Pete's not going anywhere. You know why? Because he's woke. And he's gay. And he's pro-trans. And he's pro-Green Deal. He virtue signals all the woke agenda points. He's going to be fine. Listen, we're talking about Democrats here. They literally just put a guy with brain damage into the United States Senate from the state of Pennsylvania. Eric Swalwell slept with a Chinese prost I'm sorry, a Chinese spy. A spy. A known spy. Did he have to leave office in disgrace? No. Was he removed from any of his committees? No. Did he lead the charge on impeachment against Trump? Oh, yeah. Still comes out and lectures us ad nauseum, especially about January 6th. This guy was literally in bed with a spy. Dianne Feinstein had a spy in her employ for 20 plus years. And Donald Trump was the problem. And of course, they want to make a lot out of this George Santos, the uh, gubernat or the um, uh, uh, GOP uh, congressman-elect from New York. He lied about what? Apparently, everything. He lied about where he went to school. He lied about his resume. He lied about said he was gay, and in actuality, he's straight and has a family. He lied through his teeth. He he checked off all the right New York liberal points but ran as the fiscal conservative, and he got elected. And now he's refusing to, you know, you got Democrats out there lecturing him, you, you have no moral ground to take this, this office, you're a liar. You, you looked at Obama lately? 
I mean, think about it. The guy in 1988 was done. Why? Because he was a liar. Proven so. Senator Joseph Biden may have more explaining to do. The new questions stem from With taped remarks of, of Biden States. during an April campaign appearance in New Hampshire. I went to law school on a full academic scholarship, the only one in my, in my class uh, to have a full academic scholarship. Went back to law school and in fact ended up in the top half of my class. I was the outstanding student in the political science department at the end of my year. I graduated with three degrees from undergraduate school and 165 credits, only 123 credits. Biden now concedes he did not graduate in the top half of his law school class, that he does not have three degrees from college, and that he was not named outstanding political science student in college. Newsweek says Biden actually went to school on a half scholarship, ended up near the bottom of his class, and won only one degree, not three. Joe Biden ranked 76th in a class of 85 at the University of Syracuse Law School. I mean, this guy comes off this whole thing as a flyweight. Now Biden says Newsweek is right. His memory had failed him. And I'd be delighted to sit down and compare my IQ to yours if you'd like, Frank. Joe Biden was victimized by the truth. Bye-bye, Biden. He may not know it yet, but I think this is very diff going to be very difficult for him to recover. Is Joe Biden dead meat, yes or no? I think so. Bob? It's in terminal condition. Terminal. Eleanor. Yes, unless he comes in third in Iowa. <laughs> Morton. Dying. Boy, those predictions didn't age well, did they? Because look who's sitting in the White House now. And he's still lying. He can't help himself. For years, Joe Biden has been recounting a story of American heroism and heartbreak on the front lines, recently telling a crowd in New Hampshire how he traveled to Afghanistan to pin a silver star on a young Navy captain. One of his buddies got shot, fell down a ravine about 60 feet. This guy climbed down a ravine, carried this guy up on his back under fire, and the general wanted me to pin the silver star on him. And then a moving moment as Biden approached with the medal. It's the God's truth. My word is a Biden. He stood his attention. I went to pin him. I said, sir, I don't want the damn thing. Do not pin it on me, sir. Please, sir, do not do that. He died. He died. But the Washington Post dug into the story and determined Biden got the time period, the location, the heroic act, the type of medal, the military branch, and the rank of the recipient wrong, as well as his own role in the ceremony. My dad, when I got elected vice president, he said, Joey, Uncle Frank fought in the Battle of the Bulge. He was not feeling very well now, not because of the Battle of the Bulge, but he said, and he won the Purple Heart, and he never received it. He never, he never got it. Do you think you could help him get it? Well, I said, Uncle Frank, you won this, and I went to peace. He said, I don't want the damn thing. <laughs> I'm serious. He said, I don't want it. I said, what's the matter, Uncle Frank? You earned it. He said, yeah, but the others died. The others died. I lived. I don't want it. Okay, Joe Biden was vice president from 2009 to 2017. And the story of Uncle Frank and the Purple Heart supposedly took place sometime during that period. However, there are a couple of small insignificant details. Joe Biden Sr. died in 2002, and Uncle Frank died in 1999. Not to mention that there isn't any proof that Frank Biden even received the Purple Heart in the first place. And as the New York Post points out, Frank Biden's tombstone does not identify him as a Purple Heart honoree, nor does his obituary. And Uncle Frank's reaction to his nephew trying to pin the Purple Heart in his chest sounds strikingly familiar to a story that Biden used to tell on the 2020 campaign trail about giving a medal to a Navy captain. A story that wasn't true, by the way. He's a pathological liar. He is involved in a crime with his son Hunter up to his eyeballs that not only profited them personally from places like Ukraine and China, but it puts our national security at risk. And yet, it's okay, because he's a Democrat. But Donald Trump, he got to go. He's a problem. So don't worry about old Mayor Pete and Fox News lamenting over there, this could be the end of Mayor Pete's career. It's not the end. Only, only as a Democrat can you chalk up these kind of failures and still be given the golden ring. Anthony Fauci is without a doubt 
the most successful failure in the history of the United States. He failed badly on the AIDS virus. And the medication that he did recommend not only didn't stop AIDS, it actually accelerated the deaths of the people who took it. Even Matthew McConaughey made a movie about that. Dallas Buyers Club, Ring Any Bells? That he had to sneak into Mexico and bring back some pharmaceuticals from there that actually treated people, and they were getting over AIDS. But Anthony Fauci couldn't have that. And this is the guy we put in charge of COVID, who brought us love potion number nine. We weren't allowed to do anything else, take anything else, and anybody who did from the president to Joe Rogan were immediately vilified. Scientists and doctors who disagreed with Fauci lost funding. They lost credibility. Some lost their licenses. Because that's what we do. As long as you check the right boxes, as long as you do the bidding of the deep state who put you where you are, you can be grossly incompetent, brain damaged, a habitual liar, and completely, grossly to the point of being negligible incompetence. And you can still be Mayor Pete and know, I still got a shot at the White House because I'm a Democrat.